one thing you should do in every single COD Zombies map. So on Nighter and Totem, there's something you have to do every single time you play the map. And that's going to be getting a few thousand points. So when we have enough points, you want to come up this way here. And you want to come up to this cabinet that's just over here and buy the scoped car. Why do you want to do this? I don't know, but it's something you need to do every time you play Nactor and Totin. So one thing you need to do every time you play Varut is you need to come to this chair here and press it. Pretty scary stuff. Things are always more scary when you press them and they make scary noises. One thing you need to do every time you play Shinonuma, and it's pretty simple, you welcome to Peter McCain up here and just start shooting him. I mean, really lay into him. Don't go easy. Go, go buy a wall weapon if you have to. That's what I do, and then I yeah, you just you just shoot him. Just keep shooting him. On Doree, something you always need to do without fail is get a pack upon his PPSH and then get over to the catwalk. That's the most important thing you need to do on Doree's or you're not an epic gamer. One thing you should be doing every game of Kingdom Hearts Totten is coming here, is coming up here and dolphin diving down. That's something that every Kino the Totem Zombies player should do every time you play the game. Something you should do in every game of five is come to Mr. Pig down here. And honestly, I hate seeing him suffer. So we're just going to have to put him out of his misery. Sorry, Mr. Pig. One thing you should be doing in every match of Ascension is using this thing to kill some zombies. And if you're not doing that, then you're just kind of stupid. For example, watch this. Look at this guy get wrecked. Very efficient for killing. One thing you should be doing in every match of Call of the Dead is picking up this fuse that can be in this room here and taking it down here. You'll get some funny dialogue and yeah, you're helping out Ultimus, so. Something you should be doing in every game of Shangri-La is let the monkey pick up your drop and get something more valuable. One thing you should be doing on Moon every game is coming here and seeing what perk spawns in. If it's Speed Cola and you want Jug, obviously what you're going to want to do is reset your game or vice versa. Something you should be doing every game of Transit is being super sneaky. One thing you want to do in Nuketown Zombies as soon as you can is buy this door here, knife this box, and grab the Galva Knuckles. They're pretty effective. They're pretty good for getting points and sometimes getting out of a sticky situation. Something you want to do on Die Rise every game is go in this elevator here and try and see if you can find PhD. Something you want to do in Mob of the Dead, do nothing. If you do absolutely nothing, you'll get a different outro than you would in the normal map. See? It goes black and white, you get a version of the Moon Easter Egg Zone. Something you should do in every match of Buried is first of all release Leroy, but there's a bit more you should do. Once you've released him, go grab yourself some candy because you're hungry. No, I'm joking. You don't eat it. Take it to Leroy. Knife Leroy so he follows you. Take him over here a little bit closer for good luck. Give him the candy when he's facing you here and he'll smash his mystery box and it will never move again. So you can hit the box now and get your favorite wonder weapon. Just like here. Yay! One thing you should start doing more in Origins is digging up dig sites. Because you never know what you'll get. One thing you should start doing in Outbreak is looking around for these computers here. If you interact with them, you'll get 100 points. In Infection, try and use some more of the traps. There's actually a few really interesting ones, like this ambulance here. Pretty much like a monkey bomb for you. It's pretty cool. In Carrier, if you have a weapon that you're not wanting to use or has run out of ammo, you can give it to this guy here. On the scent, you should really start trying to find this little drone. If you damage it enough, it'll explode and give you the drop inside. And it also gives you ammo. In Shadows of Evil, you should be throwing this grenade over here and then picking up this bit of paper every time you play. It'll give you 500 points. In the Giant, you should do the free perk easter egg. Well, not so much free, but you unlock it. And just like that, we have set up. Very nice. In Derizer Draka, you should try and use the tram more. Sometimes it can give you a pretty cool reward. I mean, look at that. In Zetsubon Oshima, you should start picking up this bucket more and actually using it. And with that as well, you should pick up a seed. Then you should plant that seed. Then you should water it. Let's see what I get. Hey, very nice. In Gold Krovi, if you speed run getting to round six, then you're able to get this cool wrench. And if you speed run even more, there's even other weapons. You can get this by coming to here and just kill a bunch of zombies as fast as you can. Get bonked, bonk, bonk. Bonk. In Revelations, if you speed run, you can get another melee weapon. So you should probably be doing that. You have nunchucks. In Zombies in Spaceland, you should be building Neil. This is because you can get rewards for doing his challenges. For example, do not go into Last Stand. That sounds easy enough. And look at that. I did his challenge. And I, I got tickets. That's what I call a poggers. On the first round in Rave of the Redwoods, obviously you're not going to have a weapon. You're supposed to pick up a melee weapon. What I recommend you do is don't pick up a melee weapon just yet because you get more points for punching them. And now that we've got a few more points, now we can pick up this axe that has two heads. I didn't know there were things. And yeah, there you go. In Shallow Shuffle, you should pick up the UDM as early as possible. It's a really good weapon and it's really high in damage. In Attack of the Radioactive Thing, you should be trying to get the Wonder Weapon. There's a few reasons for this. One, it's really good, especially for the special enemies on the map as well, because sometimes they take a bit of health to kill. In Beast from Beyond, something you really want to do is buy Quick Revive. 
you're probably going to need it with how unbalanced the cryptids are at the start of the game. On the final right, you want to keep this door shut and go the longer way around the map. The reason why that door has been left shut is because now we can use this area as a great camping spot. Something I used to do a lot back in the day of the final right. There's also an M1 Grand here as well. The M1 Grand in this game is pretty good. In Groston House, you should do the little Easter egg that's in the map to get access to the mystery box. So make your time on the map much more enjoyable. In the darkest shore, there are many things that you shouldn't do. But one thing you can do is use the MG42 here. It's quite literally the only situation that you'd want to probably use it in. And when you melee these zombies, you don't really get any points from them anyway, so yeah. And then go pick up your max ammo. In the Shadow Throne, you want to come over here and pick up the shovel. Now you have a shovel. So that's pretty useful. Where would you guys be without me with all my useful tips? In the Torture Path, you can come up to this wall by station here, and I'll give you a random starting weapon. In the map, the Frozen Dawn, you'll come to this area here and think, this looks like a door, but I can't get through. There's no points. Well, that's what this thing's for. You don't use points, you use kills. So if you guys have only played the map once, now you know what you actually have to do to progress in it. And just like that, we're in the ice cave now, and then we can buy the real first door. Oh, no, not again. Something you should do in Blood of the Dead, if you do not have your strife pistol with its bayonet knife, is to use your specialist weapon. So wait until it's charged up, open the catwalk, run, and then just go for it. It makes this whole sequence a lot easier and... It doesn't have to be that hard if you know what you're doing. We can actually get all the way over here and not have to, you know, deal with any of this. And we're here, stress-free and in the prison. Very nice. In Classified, there's a way to get a lot of points at the start of the game. I'm going to show you how. First of all, you're going to kill all but one zombie. That will do. Then we're going to make our way through here by this door here. Then this one, then we're just going to start pressing F on this. Once you interact with the door enough, Samantha will say a quote, and then a bunch of normal crawlers will spawn in. Don't kill the zombie foe, keep them about. Use a temporal gift if you want, and then go collect all your points. Again, this can be done on round one. Just try and avoid picking up nukes, obviously. That's how much I made without double points. So if you had a double point, you're making around 10 grand, and it's round one. And if you're lucky, you might even get the Winter's How, or the N94. In nine, you can get a free pack of strife pistol on, like, round three if you're lucky. If you cut this rope over here, then follow the challenges that it gives you. Once you complete the first challenge, you can pick up a prize or you can say no to it. That's what we'll do. Then it'll give you another challenge. You're going to reject your reward one more time and then you have one more challenge then you can get your pistol. And there's your pistol. Nice and pack a bunch for your first room challenge. Something you should do on Voyage of Despair is learn how to get the Kraken for the quest and the upgrades. Overall, it's a pretty decent wonder weapon and it's quite easy to switch over what variant you want. It'll cost you some points, but overall, it's a good thing to have. In Dead of the Night, there's two ways you can get the wonder weapon. One, being from the mystery box. Or two, you can go around the map and find the symbols and line them up with that. Then I'll give you it for free, which is pretty cool. In Ancient Evil, you can come up to Medusa here and interact with her and she'll give you a challenge. Do what the challenge says and you'll get rewarded. Simple as that. There are many things you can do in Alpha Omega, but one thing I always like to do is... Get enough points, buy the doors to this van thing, grab my galvanicles, bonk, bonk. In Tiger Totem, you know you always got to do the George Romero Easter egg. Something you should do in every match with D-Machine is the coffin Easter egg. You can do the coffin Easter egg pretty early on. It's quite funny to watch in general, and you get a lot of good rewards from it. In Firebase Z, you should do the bunny Easter egg. Quite similar to the coffin Easter egg, you'll get a few cool rewards after. But be quick, because you'll get teleported back. Something you should do in Marauder Totem is come use this trap, because it's one of the only traps in Cold War Zombies. In Forsaken, you should stay in the spawn room as long as you can. This is because the rounds work differently in the spawn room compared to the rest of the map, and the zombies will just start spawning in when they please, kind of. It's a good way to make points fast in the early rounds, and it'll get your game set up for the entire map. And as for things you should do in Vanguard Zombies, don't play the game. 